Hello. In the next set of videos, we're going to talk about feedback and stability of amplifiers. Um, just as a way of introduction, we have seen how um, the gain as well as the input and output characteristics of transistor amplifiers, meaning input resistance, output resistance, etc., um, are dependent on transistor parameters such as beta, uh, which exhibit dependencies on temperature as well as process variations. That means that circuit performance can vary from one circuit to another um, of, the same, of the same part. Basically, let's say that you have two ICs that were fabricated at different times. Performance of your circuit is going to depend on which IC uh, you apply or you pick for your circuit, as well as temperature fluctuations. Um, that's an undesirable characteristic. We would like our circuit to be robust to those changes or to uh, exhibit little variation with respect to those changes. Um, and in order to do that, we can use uh, feedback, specifically negative feedback in our circuits, in order to gain that stability or that robustness to both temperature as well as process variations. Now, feedback... Uh, it just means what the term implies. We're picking a part of the output signal and feeding it back into the input. There are two ways uh, that this feedback can be applied. Uh, there is negative feedback, also referred to as degenerative feedback, in which a portion of the output signal is subtracted from the input signal. And you're familiar with that from, uh, from your op-amp circuits. When you, when you were building um, amplifiers using op-amps, you basically what you did is you would pick an op-amp and somehow take a portion of the output signal, run it through some feedback network. It could be, for example, a feedback resistor and fitting it back into your input. Um, and let's say, for the sake of example, that this is your amplifier here. Now, the idea here uh, is that you were always feeding it back to the negative input terminal of your op-amp. That's why it constituted negative feedback as opposed to positive feedback. Where you will essentially do the same thing, sample your output signal or sends your output signal, run it through some kind of feedback network and feed it back to your input signal. But in this case, you will be applying uh, the sample from your output, you will be adding it to your input signal, which in the case of the op-amp, it means you're applying it to the positive input terminal of your op-amp. Now, the behavior uh, that these types of feedback generate is drastically different. In the case of negative feedback, it tends to stabilize uh, the circuit, whereas in the case of positive, positive feedback, it tends to uh, destabilize the circuit. Uh, now, it's not like one of them is always good and the other one is always bad, but it depends on the application. So they're used for different applications. Negative feedback, for example, is typically used in the stabilization of amplifiers. And positive feedback uh, is typically used in applications such as uh, oscillators or bistable circuits. Uh, the way negative feedback works in this particular case is that if you consider the op-amp, um, the output is going to be uh, proportional to the difference in the input across the two terminals. So um, essentially it's going to amplify the difference between the positive input terminal and the negative input terminal. The differential input signal is the difference between these two signals, VID. Um, since you are designing the amplifier negative feedback, uh, the op-amp or the whole circuit is going to take care that uh, that delta is very small 
we typically approximate that as uh, both input terminals having the same voltage. The way this works, if uh, the way negative feedback works, is let's imagine that your input uh, voltage or your positive input terminals uh, increases its voltage slightly. Since the positive input terminal is increasing with respect to the negative input terminal, that means your output is going to increase. So basically, let's imagine that this voltage goes up. That means your output voltage is going to go up. That output voltage is going to be multiplied times some feedback factor as it goes through the feedback network. And then being fed back into the negative input terminal, that voltage is going to um, go up as well. Uh, therefore, maintaining the the delta equal to zero so that's how the negative feedback would work if you apply the same uh, parameter in positive feedback let's imagine that your positive input terminal goes up slightly that means your output will go up slightly uh, since the output is tied up to the positive input terminal it means this input terminal is going to keep going up even further and so it's going to get farther away from the negative input terminal um, which means your output is going to keep going up, etc., until eventually your output is going to reach the saturation voltage for your amplifier. So in one case, you're um, effectively keeping both terminals at the same voltage to maintain a stable output voltage. In the other case, uh, the, the positive feedback mechanism reinforces that difference, um, and so the output just diverges. Um, in this case, to the highest possible voltage it can go, which will be the rail voltage. Another example uh, of negative feedback that we have seen uh, is when we apply an emitter resistor to, let's say, a common emitter amplifier. So, negative feedback. the emitter resistance. If you remember, for a common emitter amplifier, let's say we had uh, the basic configuration where we have the input signal being applied to the base, the output signal taken out of the collector. And you could just have tied this end to, to ground directly, and then uh, your gain will be equal to, with no RE, will be negative RC divided by the little array of your amplifier Q1, of your transistor Q1, excuse me. Um, if we apply an emitter resistor, now our gain with RE was equal to negative RC divided by little array plus RE. So basically, we experience a reduction in the gain. How do we know it is uh, negative feedback. Well, if you consider the, um, the common emitter amplifier, we can also express the gain in terms of the transconductance. We can consider it a transconductance device where the gain is equal to negative GM times RC. Why transconductance? Well, uh, the transconductance implies you are uh, taking an input voltage and transforming it into an output current. And then uh, that output current you're multiplying times RC in order to get back um, an output voltage. Um, which one is the input voltage? Well, the input voltage is actually uh, VBE, the small signal VBE. That will be your input voltage. And your output is going to be, the output current is going to be your collector current IC. I notice that I am writing small signals. Um, I know that VBE has a stable DC value of about 0.7 volts, but then as my input signal oscillates, there is a small signal um, variation around that quiescent point. My VBE uh, voltage uh, oscillates with it. In this case, we can see that if we increase our input uh, signal, our input voltage will go up, which means that our uh, VBE voltage increases. Assuming this voltage here, the voltage at the emitter remains stable, uh, my VBE increases. An increase in VBE 
the small signal VBE is going to produce an increase in my small signal collector current because there is a dependency between IC and VBE, an exponential dependency uh, modeled by the Shockley equation. Now, if this current increases, that means that there is a higher voltage drop across my RE resistor, and so my VE voltage increases. And therefore, it tends to counteract, you know, if my VE went up, now my VE is going up so that my VBE uh, is trying to stay at the same level always. So my change um, in VE is trying to counteract uh, that change, that original change in the input voltage. And therefore, we call this negative feedback because uh, as, as I increase or as I move my input voltage in a certain direction, there are changes happening in the circuit that tend to bring uh, the change to bring about a change in the opposite direction or to stabilize the circuit. Notice that we don't have that mechanism if we don't have the RE resistor, then uh, the emitter of Q1 will be directly tied to ground. And so if I increase my input voltage signal, I have no mechanism uh, to keep VBE constant. My VBE will be increasing, which means my collector current will be increasing and there will be no feedback mechanism. Uh, to, to bring VBE down. And that's introduced by resistor RE at the expense of gain. But as we saw previously, we are gaining in temperature stability as well as uh, stability to beta variations. Now, negative feedback, um, it typically does produce a reduction in gain. That's what it does. Um, in any case, when we apply negative feedback, uh, the most salient or notable effect is that we are reducing the gain of the circuit. Now, you may not think that reducing the gain is necessarily something good, but the idea here is that we are trading off gain for other desirable properties, um, which are related to circuit stability for the most part. Uh, one of them is we gain gain stabilization, meaning our gain becomes less dependent on process variations, on beta variations, temperature, etc., we also gain a reduction in nonlinear distortion, so we basically increase or improve the linearity of our circuit. Um, we will see that uh, we also experience a reduction in noise sensitivity in some cases when the, the noise is originated uh, within the circuit, um, as well as we gain some control of the input and output resistance for our circuit. Uh, depending on the type of feedback configuration that we have, and we're going to see different types of, um, of feedback uh, amplifiers, uh, we are able to increase or decrease our input or output resistance depending on what type of amplifier and what type of feedback we apply. And so we gain control over that, and we are able to improve it. We're able to either increase or decrease the input or output resistance as, as needed. Um, and finally, another important one is that we are able to extend the bandwidth of the amplifier. As we will see, there is a trade-off between gain and bandwidth of an amplifier. And so if we decrease the gain, we increase the bandwidth and vice versa. Now, um, we will see that under certain conditions, negative feedback can become positive feedback. And we will study what those conditions are. Um, and that's a problem because it can cause oscillations, which... Again, if we are designing an oscillator, that's something that we want, so it's not necessarily something bad per se, uh, but when we're designing an amplifier, we don't want oscillations to happen. So it, it will be um, a non-desirable effect for amplifier applications. Uh, we're going to, when designing negative feedback amplifiers, we're going to study the conditions for stability, so the conditions to avoid oscillations, uh, which are summarizing what's known as the Nyquist criterion for stability. Uh, and then we are going to finally study some techniques of frequency compensation. Uh, and these are techniques that are used uh, to guarantee the stability for a particular circuit. Um, so that's in summary um, uh, a list of the topics that we are going to be covering. First, we will study with, uh, we'll start with a study of feedback, the different types of feedback and the effects of feedback. And then the undesirable effect that feedback introduces is uh, potentially we're going to lose stability due to oscillations and then how to compensate, uh, how to, we will learn how to evaluate whether a circuit 
uh, is going to oscillate and how to compensate that circuit using frequency compensation techniques to avoid those oscillations. Thank you.